Hey gets yo what's up guys what is going on hope y'all doing well uh welcome back welcome back chelsea won chelsea won um it feels like the natural order of things has been reestablished. at least that's what it felt like right after the game um yeah um i think everyone is expecting them to lose because at this point it doesn't matter if it's chelsea manchester united because if you're losing 10 games in a row and you're having the awful season that they're having then it only stands that, yeah, you're going to expect them to, uh, to lose. But, I mean, they have to win at some point, right? Uh, this might be the only win this whole season, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't think the actual scoreboard reflects what happened on the pitch because Bournemouth should have won this game. They were in enough comfortable position to be able to win this game. Um, right off the gate, they, they had that one play with, uh, I think Billing it was with a nice little heel flick, and that could have been 1-0. And right after that, they had another one, equally the same, almost the same play. That could have been the 2-0. And that would have just, I mean, it would have rolled over Chelsea had those two goals gone in. And then after that, it made sense when they when they scored their goal, which was a beautiful goal. The whole buildup was amazing. It was like top tier. You only see that in like top clubs like Manchester City, Real Madrid. The whole buildup from from the back with uh, and the triangulation and the the Vina. Vina just setting himself up and placing it upper 90. Beautiful. 1-0. One, one I thought, that's it. You know, they're, they're going to take this game and this is going to be a Bournemouth game. And not surprisingly, just because, you know, they're playing against Chelsea, right? I'm not trying to make fun of Chelsea here, but it's just facts are facts, right? They're, they're having a horrible season. And then it was strange when, like, okay, Conte, center, and then Gallagher doesn't even jump up. I mean, right to Gallagher and just redirects the ball and, you know, 1-1, one, one, which to me was great just because it's going to provide a more entertaining match. Uh, otherwise, it just gets bland and boring. Or maybe that would have been fun to watch Bournemouth uh, destroying Chelsea. Yeah, that was pretty much a uh, Bournemouth's uh, game, first half. Uh, the only thing I'd say for Chelsea, the the positive was uh, Madueki. He was owning that flank, you know, especially, I think it was Vina that was covering. He got past Vina at will, anytime he wanted to. Some of the some of the centers that he made were questionable. Sometimes I thought he could have been a little bit more crafty in the way he was centering, a little bit more, you know, clever. Uh, there was one I remember in particular where Gallagher was waiting for him. I think he could have dinked it over between the two defenders and Gallagher was just going to be able to push it in there was the one that he got past and he decided to take it himself to shoot and it went outside and i don't think uh lamps uh, was too happy about that but uh, i don't blame him at the same time because you know there was nobody in there it was uh, very bottled up there were a lot of bodies uh, in there from bournemouth and uh i still think he did amazingly i still think he did really really great uh, i haven't seen him play that much because he hasn't been getting that much play time I only seen him coming in second half and not really doing anything that would make me notice him. I always heard, you know, that people saying that he should be playing. He should. I agree now. I agree he should. Uh, a very exciting player to watch and just a lot of energy. Best player the first half uh, from Chelsea, at least. Uh, Christie is another one that I really enjoyed. That guy is just, I mean, turbo, you know, charging up uh, up the front uh, with the ball from Bournemouth. He had a chance to a header, I think, that could have gone in. I think that was the second half. And it wasn't until the second half that Chelsea started getting back into the game. And Felix, I, I was surprised when I saw Felix on the bench. I was like, what? I didn't even realize Felix didn't play the Arsenal game. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wasn't thinking, hey, where's Felix at? So when I saw him on the bench and on the sideline warming up, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, Lamps, you're, you're going to play it like that. Okay. But it made kind of sense in this game, not having played the last two or one game before. Uh, so yeah, like he's not gonna miss from that distance. To me, he's one of the most threatening, if not the most threatening, dangerous players uh, that they have in the squad. Really good uh, play by Sterling, taking it down the uh, down the flank, the left flank, and passing it to to Felix. And Felix is just you know calm, composure. You know he's not gonna miss from that. Thankfully, it got to him. He was the one that going uh, that was going inside the boxes. If it was Havertz, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that would have gone in. Then the Ziyech coming in, the, the center, you know, what he does best. Pretty much the only thing I think that, that he does. I don't really personally like Ziyech. But, uh, yeah, that's neither here nor there. When I heard that he was going to go to PSG, I was like, PSG want this guy? But you never know. He could turn out to be a better player over there than he is for Chelsea. So you never know. That, that happened to Di Maria. I think he went from Manchester United. Didn't play that well. Had a bad time there. I think he was only there a couple months, several months maybe. I don't know. I wasn't watching football, but... I do remember the transfer, him going to PSG, and, you know, look what happened, right? To Badia Shiel, and Badia Shiel pretty much just hitting it to uh, uh, Neta, and he wasn't able to hold on to the ball and just pretty much just deflected and went inside the goal. But still, good goal, good uh, set piece. Chelsea plays so erratic, there's no system to their to their game of play. You know that they want to, you know, they're headed to the opposition's uh, goal because they want to put the ball in the back of the net, but that's it, that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's all you get from them. There was a... Uh, the tackle from uh, Silva on uh, Solanke, Solanke, I I think that should have been a penalty. That looked like a penalty. Yeah, he 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 didn't get the ball. Uh, Solanke got to the ball before him, 
but uh yeah lucky lucky for chelsea i thought it was a really good game i thought it was an entertaining uh game um yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm thinking right now, I was going to say something about Enzo, but no, yeah. Mudrik. Mudrik is one that I'm still hoping, I don't know, he's got to settle into, I was going to say the league, but he's got to settle into the club, it seems more. But the club that he's playing for is not playing that well, so uh, it's going to be rough. It's going to be a, a rough go, uh, but we'll see. We'll see, yeah. Uh, oh, and too bad for Chilwa. I think he got injured. Might be just a couple of games. I hope it's not the rest of the season. But, I mean, at this point, it doesn't probably really matter. Guys, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much again for watching. Uh, stay tuned for future videos, as always. And I will see you in the next match. Tschüss.